guys, we're back and today we're going to be doing it a little different. First off, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to my channel, who has watched my videos, who have supported me along the way. I've been doing this for almost three months and I have 1,420 subscribers and 3,928 public watch hours. So shout out to y'all, man. I really appreciate y'all support my channel and overall helping support the Otor community. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me for advice, so today I'm going to be giving that advice. I really appreciate y'all. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go into light burn. So y'all stick around. All right, guys, so we're going to start off with light burn. All right, imagine if this image right here, we will say it was 300 by 300. Okay, we got our image there. A lot of people ask, um, you know, my laser is out of bounds or my uh, I keep getting error messages or uh, my laser won't start. A lot of that is because sometimes when you import the picture, it's over the lines. It's, if it's over this square, your laser will not start. It will start and, or it will start jumping around, making all kind of noises because you're out of the borders. Um, it's a 400 by 430 and you're over it. So make sure you keep your picture inside of the lines, inside of the border, so you don't have that issue. Alright, so next on our list is the frame button or to hit frame and have the laser outline the material that you're working on. You will go over here to edit, you will go to device settings, and you have to make sure that your enable laser fire button is on, it's engaged, it's enabled. If you don't, you can hit shift and frame all you want to and you will never get a laser beam. So once you enable this, you can go ahead and press OK and then you would exit out of the program and start the program again. Um, another thing, um, fast white space scanning. You will turn that on. So when it get to a white space, it'll go faster than if you had it set to your, your speed set to 2500. If you enable fast white space scanning, then it will go 3000 in those areas that is not gonna be engraved. Um, so we'll leave that. Um, in order so you can see your laser on or for people who have not transition over to the fixed focus laser you'll go to moves and right here there's a fire button you can change it all the way up to 20 I believe 20 uh, percent power don't do that <laughs> keep it at about one or less than one if you blind like me you need one you know what I mean so you can go 50 25 I keep mine at 1% power when I'm trying to focus my 15 watts, but a 15 watt laser, but I have transitioned over to a 20 watt focus laser, which is so much easier. You really don't have to spend the time trying to focus it and question if you got it focused right or not. It pretty much does it itself. As long as you use the cylinder, put it underneath the laser and let it all the way down to that point. There you go. It's focused that's the easiest way so but if you do have the older one that you have to self focus make sure your fire button is on you need it on any you, know, you can hit fire and your laser will fire turn it back on by hitting the same button um, you also you need to enable it in order to hit shift and frame to outline whatever material that you're engraving on to make sure that you're in borders alright so next on the agenda is disconnected laser this happens so much and it will drive you crazy so you will go to device every time it does just go to device GRBL click on it hit OK it will ask what COM be like COM6, COM3 whatever it is you COM6 it still didn't work still didn't work Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But what does work, if you unplug the USB port to your laser and plug it back in, it readies up. 
just that fast. Just unplug it out of the port and plug it back in and it'll ready up on its own. All right, next in line is start from position. If your laser is ever going bonkers, going everywhere, I mean, you don't know what to do, you don't know how to fix it, it's not going home. If you click down here, you got user origin, current position, absolute cords. That's where I leave mine at. And it's, my home is in the bottom left corner. So if your laser is acting up, I, I've had it happen to me several times. Make sure you check where your start from is. Don't lose your mind and think that the laser is not working or it's just about to explode. Because it feels like that sometimes and you want to just give up. Make sure you make sure your settings are correct and your job origin is, your home is in the correct place. Don't panic. It'll be all right. All right, moving right on to the cuts and layers tab. You have the most important thing here to me is the DPI. And I'll be honest, and the reason why, of course, speed and max power takes a lot. But if you're looking for burn time, um, your bur the higher your DPI, the longer your burn time is going to be because that dots per inch increases that means that it takes longer um, it can be a lot of detail in an image but to let you know the truth um, sometimes a high DPI could be a problem it can be an issue it can it can make your burn longer and it could not be the best thing for the quality of your picture so you have to play around with it to find a great DPI my favorite is 254 um, if I'm doing like a cartoon character or something like that, I go a higher just to get more detail. Um, if you may recall, if you haven't looked at the, how turning a Dollar Tree vase into a nightlight, I use I think three, 308 maybe DPI. It took a little longer, but it gave a lot of detail, um, a whole lot of detail. So if you're getting pictures with a lot of dots, spread out very far that means your DPI is too low that means your dot per inch is too low if you see all the dots you want them closer you can possibly get so 254 to me is a a, a great little sweet spot for your DPI um, everything goes pretty much here is self-explanatory depending on what material you're using um, scan angle so zero is going up from the bottom up if you take it and you flip it like a lot of people say, hey, uh, my laser stopped in the middle of my canvas. We're going to get to that also. My laser stopped at the middle of my canvas. What do I need to do um, in order to start from the top? Well, the only thing you need to do is hit 180, and it'll flip everything around just that quick. So you flip it to 180, now your arrows are going this way. That means it's going to start at the top right corner and go left to right all the way down to the point that it stopped. You got to make sure to be there. Once you see that last line go, you stop it. So you don't, if you don't, you'll end up with an overlap. And that overlap spot is going to be lighter than the rest of the canvas. The further it go, that area is going to be lighter. Okay, so another question that I have been asked a lot is why does my laser stop engraving um, at certain parts of the material, then it starts back? Or why is my laser not on, but the fan is on, and it's moving, but there's no laser beam? There's an easy answer to that question. And that would be the red and black line or cord that is coming from the motherboard of the laser down to the laser itself is loose or unplugged. You will not get a laser beam if that red and black line is not pushed in. And it is, it is a plug. It's on the side of your laser. Make sure the red and black plug is plugged in. If you're having any issues with your laser not firing, that could be your problem. All right, moving right on along to the next issue. If your laser is placed here, right here, and you hit shift and frame, and your laser is recognizing that this is the home position and you hit shift and frame and your picture is right here but your home is right here you hit shift and frame and your laser go over here and you hit this wall and start 
grinding out and making weird noise and grinding all way. It's because you should have hit the home button first. Send your laser home. When you are framing an item and you're not leaving the home position, your laser itself is taking a signal from Lightburn that's saying that I'm at home, go frame this item. Soon as you hit frame and you have it in the middle of your workspace, it's gonna travel like it's traveling from home to that position. So make sure before you hit frame, before you try to engrave something, make sure that you are at the home location before you hit frame. Because if not, your laser can send you and grind out because it's trying to get to the position from home instead of from where you are located. Next in line, if you're having any issues with your laser whatsoever, make sure to do your due diligence and check all of your plugs. Make sure they're plugged in tight. Make sure you have everything zip tied correctly. After a certain amount of time, if something goes back and forth so many times, you can break off the prongs of your plugs. So make sure you have them secured where they will not move. This right here is the 20 watt fixed focus laser and I love it. And I love it for a few reasons. It's very easy to focus. For you people out there who still have the 15 watt or the 20 watt, um, I never really was a fan of the 20 watt that you have to focus because a lot of people say you have to get the G8 lens, you have to get uh, so many different things to make it give you quality work. I never had that problem with the 15 watt. Right out of the box, I had some great work, um, quality work. But this 20 watt, that's a different story. This thing right here is amazing. I can't even lie to you. I use this small little piece, the small little cylinder. I sit it on top of any material that I want to use, sit it underneath the laser, use my height adjuster, lower it up and down to the point where it's sitting on top of the cylinder, remove the cylinder, shift the frame, make sure I'm in boundary, and start the burn. So if you haven't, transition over to the Autora 15 watt, 20 watt, 7 watt fixed laser module, you should. It's easier, it's faster, it gives you a better quality of work. I have a description for the 20 watt and others inside the description, description section below. So if you're looking, to upgrade to this 20 watt or the 15 watt or the 7 watt fixed focus laser click on that link go ahead and move on up that's how I did I mean great great machine so uh, I want to thank you all I might didn't answer all your questions um, but this don't have to be the last video also if you have any questions about or tour I know it get to a point where some of you get so frustrated you want to give up. I know a lot of people who say, I use your numbers. No, please listen to me. Don't use my number. My laser is abused. I, I abuse this thing. I use it so much. Um, run the sweet spot file. Try to run it every week and a half to make sure that your settings are still the same. If you need it, shoot me an email. There's hundreds of people who have. I don't charge anything for my help. Um, I want all of us to be successful. Um, I want all of us to do have great quality work. So you email me, email me at southernsmokeengraving.com and I will happily help you. You know, sometimes I'm busy, I might not get to you, but I try to get back to everyone pretty fast. But there's a lot of different things that I don't know and I'm learning and everything I learn, I will try to help anyone else. If you have any advice to give me or Anything else, contact me. Let me know. But I really want you to know that the sweet spot file is the most important thing when you're trying to find the correct settings on any material. Wood, canvas, tile, uh, glass. You need to run a test to make sure that your settings are correct. You can't go off someone else's number. You have to use your own. I appreciate y'all 100%. Thank y'all for supporting my channel. A lot of great content is on its way. I appreciate y'all. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers and we will get there. Y'all stay blessed. Until next time, I'll holler.